Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, apologies about that, and also if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well. If there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision 2023 related video here on my channel, and another instalment in my sporadic series titled What We Know So Far, where I go through pretty much everything we as Eurovision fans know so far about the upcoming edition of the ESC, and and this year's edition, the 67th edition of it, will take place on Tuesday the 9th, Thursday the 11th, and Saturday the 13th of May at the Liverpool Arena in the UK on behalf of current champions Ukraine, a week after the coronation of King Charles. Since I last filmed a video like this, there's been obviously quite a lot of news and I'm going to try and cover as much as possible in this video you're watching now. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm genuinely interested to know what you think. And as always, there are links in the description to my other social media pages. Check them out if you so wish. I think the last time I filmed a video like this was just after the allocation draw. Certainly I made a video reacting to the allocation draw. That's on my channel if you want to take a look. But during that event, we got a glimpse of the graphic design and artwork for this year's contest, which I think I may have mentioned on my channel already. We know what it looks like. It is a series of pulsating hearts in shades of pink, yellow and blue. And the slogan is United by Music. And I had a feeling that the word United would play a part somewhere. Anyway, in terms of all of the basic details to do with the contest... We've known most of that for a long time, so I'm not going to be discussing that yet again. But very recently, we found out the presenters of this year's competition, and it seems to me as though the BBC just picked four names at random here out of a hat. <laughs> because three of them, certainly, I didn't see anywhere online. I didn't see anybody mentioning these names. I didn't see anybody saying that they were in contention to do it. Very random in my opinion. But anyway, Graham Norton will be there on stage front and centre for the final only. He was always going to play a part, not just the commentary. He's also going to be joined by Alicia Dixon, who is a musician herself, although she's mainly known these days for being a judge on Britain's Got Talent, which she's done for years. She's 44, from Hertfordshire. She's been on loads of different television shows, Strictly Come Dancing as well. She was a judge on that, and I think a participant at one point. She's been nominated for a Brit Award. She was part of Mystique, which was a sort of hip-hop girl group back in the day. And she hasn't released an album since 2015. But she is very much a musician, and she's always in the newspapers and things like that. Oh, look at what she's wearing, that sort of thing. She's going to be joined by uh, Yulia Sanina, who is the lead singer of The Hard Kiss, a group in Ukraine who've tried before to represent Ukraine at the Eurovision Song Contest. And also Hannah Waddingham, which is a name I did not expect whatsoever. She is 48, three Olivier Award nominations, She's best known for appearing in Ted Lasso, a very successful television show these days, but she was in Game of Thrones, she was in Sex Education, I think she's still in that, and she's had a lot of success from London, and every time Eurovision comes around, we usually get one of the presenters who doesn't really have any ties to music whatsoever, and it seems this year that it is Hannah Waddingham. We also know that Rylan and Scott Mills will be doing the commentary again for the semi-finals, and in the final, Graham will be alternating commentating duties with Mel Giedroich, who has been involved with the BBC at Eurovision before. She was a co-commentator a few years ago for the semi-finals. Also, Timur, the Ukrainian commentator, he's been doing it for years, former co-host of Eurovision, former co-host of Junior Eurovision, you name it, He's been there when it comes to some sort of Eurovision-related event. He is going to be involved in the final as well, doing a couple of VTs. And he's going to be doing the turquoise carpet, I think it is, alongside Sam Quek, who is from Liverpool, a former international hockey player. She does a lot of TV-related stuff these days as well. And I'm sure we'll be finding out more presenters and other people involved with the live broadcasts over the next couple of weeks, because I imagine more people will get involved. And I'm sure we'll be finding out about the interval acts very soon too, although I have read that it will be very much all about Ukraine. There'll be a lot of Ukrainian bands and that sort of thing. So I 
can't imagine there's going to be a whole lot of British focus whatsoever during those elements of the show. Which is good. I think a lot of people want this to feel very much like it's being staged in Ukraine rather than the UK. Obviously, we know that there are 37 nations taking part. We know which semi-finals they're going to be in. It says here the stage design was revealed on the 2nd of February, designed by Giulio Jimeda. It's based on the principalities, principalities, the principles, my apologies, of togetherness, celebration and community, taking inspiration from a wide hug and the cultural aspects and similarities between Ukraine, the UK and specifically Liverpool. It's going to be 450 square metres wide with 220 square metres of independently rotating LED screens, a little similar to Tel Aviv a few years ago, over 700 LED floor tiles and more than 1,500 metres of LED lights. It looks like a spectacular design and there are these edges to the stage as well, sort of boxing you in a little bit which we haven't really seen before. And we've also got this circular ring of lights on the ceiling. It looks really, really nice. And the green room is part of the, of the um, sort of arena floor as well. I've never really liked that because it takes up space for prospective people who want to go and watch the contest. But it is what it is. Uh, what we also know as well, tickets will be going on sale very shortly. I've made a whole video about my plans trying to get tickets uh, I'm going to be trying to go to the grand final on the Saturday night with my friend Peter. But we also know that about 3,000 tickets are going to be reserved for displaced Ukrainians in the UK. Specifically Liverpool, I think. Uh, so that's a nice gesture. £20. Super cheap. And I'm hoping that tickets for everybody else will be... They're not going to be as cheap as that, but I'm hoping they're going to be fairly affordable. Especially now that this news has come out. So... There we go. That's a nice gesture, I think, indeed. Let's go through the songs that we know so far, then. And I haven't really spoken about any of these. So let me know what you think about this year's lineup so far. Semi-final one, Tuesday the 9th of May. All of these 15 countries will vote alongside France, Germany and Italy and the rest of the world. And I'm interested to know how this particular element of the voting is going to work. Because I think it could be easily manipulated. I don't know if that will happen or not. Uh, I'm interested to know precisely how it's going to work. I think it's through an app or something. It doesn't really affect me because I'm not part of the rest of the world here. But this is a brand new element to the voting. And who knows, it could be the difference between one country going through and one country missing out. With this semi-final, it is harder to not qualify <laughs> because there's only 15 countries in it. Uh, so let's go through them. In the first half, Croatia are going to be represented by an all-male group, Let3, with Mama Sh. And I'm not surprised at all about this. Uh, they are a band who've been around a long time, very well known, known for their partial nudity, controversial performances, uh, sometimes vulgar lyrics, that sort of thing. And I thought, yeah, I know what's going to happen here. Croatia aren't going to send the better song. They're going to go for the more well-known group, and that's exactly what happened. Having seen the performance of Nevera Lele, that was a little underwhelming to be fair. This on the other hand was all over the place. We've got the lead singer in a sort of skin-tight outfit underneath this cape, fake moustache, lipstick, dressed like some sort of dictator. Then you've got a guy with a word plastered over his forehead and fake bombs or whatever it was. I've only seen the performance all the way through once. That was enough. It is... Very, very bizarre. And people talk about the message of the song. And I really don't know why this is such a big deal, because 99.9% .9 of viewers in May aren't going to know the message of the song, nor are they really going to care. So does the message of the song really matter? And even if people did know, is it going to play any sort of part in this song's potential success or failure? I really don't know. Certainly, it stands out from the field, and neighbouring countries... Serbia, for example, is the main one that I can see here. We'll go big for it, I'm sure. It's 100% public vote. So interestingly, even though this is Croatia's weakest song for a long, long time, it may be the one that gets them into the final. But in the final, you know what's going to happen a mile off. Juries, rock bottom, or very near the bottom. Public, a little bit higher. Mid-table, written all over it. And I imagine the performance in Liverpool will be a little bit similar to how it was at Dora, although I imagine the EBU might step in and say, you might want to change this a little bit here, you might want to change this a little bit there. We'll see. Um, 
Yeah, it's uh, certainly got people talking, but but also what I will say is that a lot of people have ranked this towards the bottom of their top 17 or top 18 so far. Anyway, Ireland, Wild Youth, We Are One. What a crushing disappointment this is. This is a song that was written for Eurovision, I feel. It's so generic, so plain, so underwhelming. And I thought the live performance at the Late Late Show a couple of weeks ago was also disappointing. It just feels so underwhelming. There's nothing really original about this whatsoever. And I think Connolly, who was the runner-up with Midnight Summer Night, which felt more Irish in a way, more beautiful, more authentic somehow, I think that song has fared better on Spotify with streams and everything. So it's clear to me that perhaps the wrong song won. But I, I saw it coming a mile off. Uh, this was a band who wanted to do Eurovision anyway. They were teasing it on social media prior to the announcement of the participants for the Irish selection. They're going to Liverpool. I don't think it's qualifying. In a 100% public vote semi-final, forget it. This song, hate to say it, could be dead on arrival. And the staging, I can't imagine, is going to be anything groundbreaking either. As for Latvia, well, this song certainly has its fans. Sudden Lights, another group. It's a very band-heavy year with Aya. And I think this is the first time in nearly two decades we're going to have lyrics in Latvian from Latvia. Hallelujah about time. This is a sort of slow burner, indie type track. I quite like it. And it does have that sort of slight lullaby feel to it as well. But again, I don't think this stands out nearly enough. And even though we don't know the entire lineup of this semi final, we don't know all 37 songs yet. Once we have all 37 songs, is this really going to pop out from the field for a lot of people? And certainly the 99.9% .9 of neutral viewers in May, is this going to really stand out for them? I'm not sure it will. As such, I'm tempted to say it's an NQ again for Latvia. But at least this is a very credible track. As for Malta, the busker, dance our own party. This is quite fun. You could say it's also a bit cringy in terms of the way it's presented. But I think they've done a really good job here of taking a song that some people might view as pretty damn average, but elevating it a notch with the presentation of it. So you've got the on-screen graphics, the sofa, the cardboard cutouts of former Maltese representatives. The lead singer is having a blast. Uh, it seems as though more people are interested in how attractive he is rather than the actual quality of the song. He's doing some sort of Saturday night fever moves towards the end. It is catchy stuff. It's all about the saxophone. And again, like Croatia, Malta here is a country that really struggles in the public half of the results. And in the semi-finals, as I keep bleeding on about it, it is now 100% public vote. Could Malta make the final with this song? Maybe. I think a lot of neutral viewers will actually really enjoy this. So maybe the points will pour in. It's hard to say. I'm on the fence with this one because I like it, but I'm really not sure it's going to go through. As for Norway, a contender to win. Out of the songs we've got so far, this is a contender to win. It's Alessandra with Queen of Kings. How old is this woman? 20? Yes, they're from Italy. Born in September 2002. Yes, indeed. Um, this song has gone to number one in Norway and has also charted in the top 40 in Sweden. So uh, certainly points will be coming in from Sweden because they're in the same semi-final. This is a good song. Um, it's got this pulsating beat. She's dressed as some sort of warrior. Her voice is splendid. It's not too over the top. It's actually quite simple. There's not a whole lot of colour to it, which is a bit of a shame. I would change that for Eurovision maybe. She's got dancers on stage waving... Uh, what looks to be those long light bulbs <laughs> that you get in classrooms, <laughs> waving them about. Um, it is good. It's so catchy. And I've listened to this track so many times. And she won MGP very convincingly over Ulrika as well. Uh, so that's quite impressive. Norwegians really wanted her. And a lot of Eurovision fans are loving this track. It is certainly a contender as far as I'm concerned. As for Portugal, the 11th of March for the final of Festival de Canchão. But tonight, February the 25th, is the first semi-final. Which involves the 2018 representative Claudia Pascual with Nashi Maria, Nashi Maria. Da, 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 da. The music video is out for that. 
if you didn't know. You've also got You Can't Win Charlie Brown, Mimi Cat with Ai Korashao, which I'm sure is going to be a contender here. And then in the second semi-final, you've got The Happy Mess, Barbara Tinoco, which is my favourite this year with Good Night, and you've also got Voodoo Marmalade, among others. We will find out the Portuguese representative on the 11th of March, and I think the final is taking place at the RTP Studios in Lisbon, I think. Not sure. But anyway, there we go. Portugal, it all starts this evening. As for Serbia, 4th of March for Pesma za Eurovisiu 2023. The first semi-finals on March the 1st. Second semi-final a day later, final on March the 4th. We've got the new Hurricane lineup with Zumi Zimi Zami. That's a contender. You've also got Philip Balosh. He might do quite well. Angelina might do quite well. Um, the guy with the lobster. Is it Luke Black? Samo Misespava? Yes, he's written that. Luke Black. Luka Ivanovic, his real name. He's a major contender. I have heard the whole song. When I made a video reacting to the snippets of the Serbian tracks, I was very indifferent on it. Now I've heard the whole thing. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not my favourite, but certainly not too bad. Tiana Dapcevic, the North Macedonian 2014 representative, is here as well. Too many songs, arguably. Only about three or four are seriously going to challenge for the win. But we will find out in due course who will be flying the flag for Serbia in Liverpool. Into the second half, Azerbaijan. We know absolutely nothing, but I did read that they are working with Azerbaijani composers and more music professionals in Azerbaijan. Because usually, it seems as though they just go straight to Sweden and work with a team over there. This time, it might be quite different. I haven't seen any rumoured names. We'll be finding out very soon who it is for Azerbaijan. Could be a serious contender, who knows. Czech Republic, this is a contender to win. And in fact, out of all of the songs that we know so far, I would say that this one is potentially the one to beat at this moment in time. It's Vesna, all-female group with My Sister's Crown, performed in English, Ukrainian, Czech and Bulgarian. It's this rousing, uh, almost anthemic, slightly folky type track. Uh, it's very striking. The national final performance did it no justice whatsoever. This needs a much bigger stage. I think there's real potential to make this stand out so much from the field. And I think not only will this qualify, but in the final, the juries will be on board with this. Top 10 written all over it. I think this is a contender to do very, very well in Liverpool. And let's not forget, it's not the Czech Republic anymore. It is Czechia. That's how they'll be known moving forwards. As for Finland, the final of UMK is tonight in Turku. What a strong lineup it is. I made a video all about it. Finland know what they're doing. Although if they send Robin Pakalen, I might film a video saying they don't know what they're doing. But I am very, very confident that it will be Cha 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 by Karya. And it is worth saying that it is 75% public, 25% jury. If a song gains 10% of the viewer vote, then that entry would be awarded 10% of 882 points, rounded to the nearest integer, 88 points. So there you go. Interesting. I've gone through the lineup in that previous video. I like all of the songs. I really, really do. Even Robin Pakalen, although that is the weakest one here. Benjamin with Hoi de Mutt. Great stuff. That would be a worthy Eurovision entry. Cha Cha Cha, though. It's going to blow the roof off the Liverpool arena. It is going to be a major contender for victory. Seriously, even with the juries in the final, I think this could challenge for the win. Um, Something to Lose by Alexandra. That's gorgeous. What a song. Ili Voimainen by Kuma. It's on early in the running order, but that's a great indie-ish track as well. Oh my god, I've spoken about it enough in the previous video, but Finland could be my personal winner of the year. All depending on tonight. Do not let me down. We'll see what happens. As for Israel, I think this could be a major, major contender as well. Noah Curell, huge star. Pop R&B stuff. Think a bit like Dua Lipa. Music videos have had millions of views online. She's won loads of MTV music awards and things like that. She knows what she's doing. Unicorn is the name of the song. We're getting it next month. It's going to be in English with some Hebrew lyrics. Great. And I think one of the songwriters is the chap who co-wrote Toy for Netta. So this guy also knows what he's doing. Doron Medley. This could be one to keep an eye out for. Moldova. The final's on the 4th of March. It should be Pasha Parfeni, the 2012 representative. A nice reunion with Lorene, perhaps, in Liverpool. It should be him. But Sunstroke Project are there, aiming to go to Eurovision for a third time. Yummy Mummy. 
It's not their best. Still all right, though. Aliona Moon, the 2013 representative. Her song is lovely. Very credible. Might win. Not expecting it to. You've also got the likes of Victor Gulick, Donia, Cosmina, etc., etc. Pasha all the way. That song could do really, really well in Liverpool. The others I'm not too sure about. And especially once we know the entire first semi-final lineup. I don't know, it's very, very hard to say. But we know this is a country that really like to do something with the staging to make a song really pop off. So I'm interested to see what we're going to get on the 4th of March. That's when we'll find out the winner of the Moldovan selection. As for the Netherlands, on the 1st of March, we will hear the song by Mia Nikolai and Dion Cooper. And Duncan Lawrence is involved. I think he's co-written the song. He's a bit of a mentor to these two. And I think it's going to be similar to the Common Lynettes in 2014. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. But I'm really, really excited. I loved the Deep to last year. I went absolutely nuts when I heard that song for the first time because it totally was the start of a slew of really great songs coming our way after some dodgy national final results. I've got very high hopes. As for Sweden, it's a three-horse race. I've been making videos about Melfest for weeks now. Lorien, people have just absolutely wet themselves. They've seen photos, and that was enough. They were like, psh, all over the floor. It is going to be Tattoo by Lorien, the two brothers from Norway, Marcus and Martinus, or Maria Sur, the young Ukrainian woman. It's going to be one of those three. As far as I'm concerned, absolutely nobody else stands a chance. You may as well ditch them and just have a three uh, act final in Stockholm in a fortnight's time because I don't see anybody else really coming close. It's Lorraine's to lose and she's going to go to Liverpool and probably win the whole contest by a mile which makes the whole thing utterly predictable. Baku 2012 all over again. But we wait and see. We wait and see. Lorraine, let's not forget, doesn't have the most amazing track record at Melfest. Yes, she's won it by a mile but she's also not made the final twice. This, however, is going through and probably winning very, very comfortably. As for Switzerland, it's Remo Forra, young chap who was on his country's edition of The Voice. 7th of March for that song, don't really know what to expect. Something tells me it could be a little bit more up-tempo than last year's effort, but also on the same wavelength, if you see what I mean. Moving on to semi-final two, Thursday the 11th of May, 16 countries, they'll all vote alongside Spain, Ukraine, the UK, and the rest of the world. This semi-final stinks, in my opinion. The quality needs to really move up because it is absolutely impossible for me at this moment in time to predict anything about who might go through. Armenia will be represented by Brunette, real name, Ellen Yeremyan. Her song's coming next month. I think it's going to be a little bit like, potentially, Kami Kami, the junior Eurovision winner a few years ago by Malena. I think it could be in that sort of vein, which would be great. This is what I'm very, very excited about. Armenia could mean business this year. As for Belgium, sent the wrong song. It's Gustav with Because of You. Okay, he sang it well. He looked good, wearing the hat. Very throwback sort of sound. Needs more vibrancy to it, though. Neutral viewers might really gravitate towards this. It's very safe. It's very poppy. It's quite uplifting. But on the whole, Belgium had better choices. As for Cyprus, we're getting the song soon. Break a Broken Heart by Andrew Lambrew, who did try to represent Australia a year or two ago. I haven't really got high hopes for this, I'll be honest. I think it might have a bit of a clubby beat, but honestly, with a title like that, it could be a super cheesy ballad as well. Anyway, Denmark, Riley, Breaking My Heart. This guy's live vocals, I'm not sure about. Because in DMGP, during the live final, it seemed to me as though he wasn't actually hitting those high notes. And this is a difficult song to sing, because it's very sort of high-pitched throughout, particularly the chorus. So I think he might be a little bit reliant on some pre-recorded vocals. I don't know. And a video did emerge of him singing. And he did not sound great, in my opinion. So I am a little bit wary of this guy's vocals. But the song itself, it's not bad. It's quite cheery. The music video, oh my god. Oh man, I'm not going to lie. That was cheesy stuff. You know, that, that was <laughs> that was a bit cheesy. But the song is fine, and I can see it qualifying. As for Estonia, a little bit of quality here. Alika with Bridges, the guy who wrote this, Vuta Hardy, he co-wrote Arcade, which won Eurovision, and he wrote um, To L'Univers for John's Tears, which finished third. So this guy is back for a third Eurovision entry for a third different nation, this is good stuff. The piano playing itself, great vocals. This is really good. 100% public vote. 
I imagine this will be shafted a little bit. But in the final, the juries will go big for this, I'm sure. As for Greece, who knows what the hell is happening here? Victor Vernikos, a 16-year-old Greek-Danish musician, already mentioned Denmark, so some points will be coming his way, if it is indeed him in Liverpool, with what they say. Now, the way this worked is that it was an internal selection. There was an artistic committee and a public committee. Victor came out on top, but the runner-up, Melissa Manzoukis with Liar, she is not happy at all, and she is taking the broadcaster to court next week to try and essentially overturn the result. They haven't got long to do this, and poor old Victor, I imagine he's in limbo at the moment. Who knows if it will be him going to the contest this May? All up in the air. As for Iceland, people are sleeping on Iceland this year, which is a bit of a shame, because uh, not only is it a great country, but the music's pretty good as well. We had the first show in Song for Kepnin last weekend, Diljau, that was a great performance. That was really good. And Bragi, who I think probably won that semi-final, they are through. Tonight we have semi-final two. Please, please, please send the right songs through. Not song three. That's the weakest of the entire bunch. And then the final is on March the 4th. Yes, indeed. Quality everywhere you look. In my opinion, it's a fairly good batch of songs. As for Romania, well, dead on arrival. This is Theodore Andre with DGT off and on. I've only seen the live performance from the national final all the way through once. He was in a sort of mesh top, then he was wearing some other top, then he was topless with words written on him, scantily clad women. There was a lot going on here and it was all a bit messy. It's a bit of a rock song, it's fine, but honestly this does not stand out much and I haven't seen many people rank it very highly. Arguably the wrong choice. I didn't see this result coming but there we are. Romania, bit of a downgrade. As for the second half of the second semi-final, Albania, we've known the song for an absolute eternity and we must be getting the revamp soon. It's Duye by Albina and Familial Kelmendi. This is really good. I think it probably will qualify. It's a decent song. It moves along at a good pace. It's quite powerful. The vocals are good. Haven't got really anything else to say about it. As for Australia, it's a bit of a rock metal number. Voyager, who were the runners-up in the Australian national selection last year. The song is called Promise. In my reaction video, I said I wasn't too sure about it. I do like this. It is one of my favourites of the year, absolutely. I think the potential for great staging is very high. Pyros galore, flashing lights everywhere. If the live vocals are on the money, this could be really, really good. Australia is a country that has struggled for so long, it seems, with the public. So hopefully people will be on board with this. I expect it to go through. But if this was in semi-final one, I would be a little bit more wary. As for Austria, rumours are um, that it's going to be a song about Edgar Allan Poe. So I've read. I don't know if there's any truth to that whatsoever. But it is Teja and Salena. And Teja tried to represent Serbia a couple of years ago. The song's coming on the 8th of March. They filmed the music video fairly recently. Teodora Spiric who was born in Austria, but of Serbian descent. Yes, indeed. Two women. I think it's going to be a fairly up-tempo track. Austria haven't been in the final since finishing third in 2018. So this is another country that for the past few years, a bit like Latvia, a bit like Germany, who are automatic finalists, I know, but another country, Georgia as well, Ireland, another country that stinks a bit when it comes to Eurovision and really need to sort themselves out. As for Georgia, it is the former junior Eurovision winner, Iru Kechanovi, who won The Voice Georgia a couple of weeks ago. And uh, big year for Georgia, haven't been in the final since 2016. I think it's going to be a big, big song. We're getting the song next month. As for Lithuania, disappointing because of the quality that was on offer. And they've gone for this song, which in my opinion only really gets good right before it ends. It's Monica, one half of the 2015 duo with Stay. And I do like this track. The chorus is pretty good. It's fairly catchy. And I think it's staged fairly well. She's got a group of women with her. But there were better options. It's as simple as that. As for Poland, they pick their entry tomorrow. And I think a lot of people want it to be Gladiator by Jan, who has written the song themselves. It is a good number. You've also got Never Back Down by Felivas, this all-male group. I think they've got a lot of fans. Uh, Dominic Dudek, that's a pretty good song. The 2020 representative who never went to Eurovision, Alicia Simplinska, with New Home. It's a ballad. That's pretty good. Could be a contender. The juries will probably love it. You've also got Blanca with Solo, etc., etc., etc. The winner will be determined by a jury and public vote. And I believe if there's a tie, the jury have the final say. Oh, boy. 
doesn't bode well. San Marino, they picked their entry this evening. I have heard enough of all of the songs. You've got Blue Dabba Dee Dabba Die, Eiffel 65 are there, Heavens Above. You've also got Debra Irato, who I think finished third in San Remo a couple of years ago. Alfia Curry, who tried to represent Australia a few years ago. The trumpet player, Roy Pachi, And also the former Albanian representative, Ronella Hayati. She's involved too. There's loads of songs here. My favourites are Tromba by Roy Pachi, but I don't think he's winning. You've also got um, Le Deva with Fiori su Marte. I like that one. Uh, Alfie's song is pretty good. Prisma by Mate or Mate, that's pretty good. Lalieno by Nevrus, I don't mind that. It's very difficult to say who. Tothem with Sacroe Profano, that's pretty good as well. But on the whole, I don't think any of these songs are really going to do the business at Eurovision. We wait and see. Slovenia, of course, it's Joker out, internally selected by the broadcaster with Carpe Diem. This sort of uh, almost British indie sound going on. It's a good song. It's going to go through, I think. And it might get Slovenia their best result for many a year. Not much else to say about that one. In the final, France, Lazara, born in Canada, with Evidemont. And this is a sort of sassy pop song. It's got a bit of a classic feel to it as well. Great vocals. She looks good. Sounds good. I think this is going to do relatively well in the final. Uh, Germany, God help us all. They pick their entry on the 3rd of March. It looks like it could be Icke Huftgold with Lied mit gutem Text, which is a car crash waiting to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Surely there is sense in Germany, and it's not going to be him. Patty Gurdy with Melodies of Hope. I mean, that's a song that just feels ready-made for Eurovision, in all honesty. Lord of the Lost with Blood and Glitter, that's going to be very, very striking. Um, but really, the quality isn't too bad. Ica lets it down big time, and we know that the Germans love a wild card. Uh, René Miller, he has a very strong song, Concrete Heart, but he's on second. Trong with Dare to be Different, he won Vietnam Idol uh, several years ago, and I think he's had quite a bit of success as well. So... Really, if you eliminate the one that I think is going to win, unfortunately, it's an open field. And although Germany have struggled for many years, this, you could say, is a bit of a step in the right direction. But for heaven's sake, pick the right damn song. Uh, as for Italy, I don't know what Marco's doing. He's faffing about. But it could well be Due Vite, which is the song he won San Remo with, this beautiful ballad. 2013 representative coming back a decade later. It's a great, great, emotionally charged, quite romantic sounding song. And you know that this is going to do fairly well in Liverpool, if indeed he sticks with this song. Spain on course for another great result. Blanca Paloma, incredible vocals. Ea, the name of the song. She's there with her group of women and she's looking really fierce and she's pouring passion into every syllable that she sings. This is great stuff. I'm surprised I like it as much as I do. It is absolutely one of my favourites this year, and it could be a contender for the win. Who knows? As for Ukraine, what a fat disappointment this is. Tvorchi, the two guys with Heart of Steel. There were better options in Vidbir, but they went for this one instead. It's a sort of R&B type number. I think we're getting the revamp very soon. They will do well. Mark my words, this could challenge for the win. Um, but it shouldn't be anywhere near. Shouldn't be anywhere near challenging for the win. They're the second favourites to win. Absolute BS, if you ask me. This song is not good enough to be anywhere near challenging for victory. But it's not a bad song. Uh, you know, I don't mind it. But I just find the chorus a little bit weak. There it is. As for the UK, we're getting the name and the song very soon. I expect a big promo thing on the BBC. I'd be disappointed if not, to be honest. Rumours are it's a female soloist. Will it be Rina Sawayama? who's had some critically acclaimed music in the past, and she's been mentioned in a British newspaper today as potentially doing it. It could be Mimi Webb. She's got an album out next week. Hello, Promotion Central. It could be somebody like Freya Ridings. It could be Circa Waves. It could be Maisie Peters. Somebody along those lines. An up-and-coming, but already somewhat successful, female musician. It's been a while since we were represented by a woman. I think it absolutely will be a woman, and I'm hoping it's a quality, quality track. Do not disappoint. Anyway, that's it. Nothing else to say. A big, big ramble from me, and I know that I was speaking very fast here, but let me know your thoughts on anything Eurovision 2023 related so far. By the end of tonight, we will have two more songs, San Marino and Finland. By the end of the weekend, we'll have another song as well from Poland. And then, before you know it, really, the national final season is drawing to a close, and it's all about the internal choices that will be coming over the next couple of weeks as well. 
and I'll be filming another What We Know So Far video in a couple of weeks time as well. Until then, hopefully the quality of this video wasn't too bad and uh, do let me know what you think. Links in the description to my other social media pages, check them out if you so wish. Can I just say again as well, I am absolutely bowled over by the amount of people that have seen the video I made a couple of weeks ago regarding UMK and Finland in general. I am just amazed so many people saw it and um, I'm very, very grateful. Until, but then again, I did say if Finland make a bit of a dodgy choice this evening, I might just uh, film another video about Finland saying that they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> no, I'm sure it won't come to that. Cha 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 all the way. Come on now, grab your pints. Until next time, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.